Right. Uh, it's about it's ten o'clock in my uh, my clock here. Uh, see some folks are still joining, so we'll give them a minute or two so that we get all the participants on the on the briefing. <laughs> For those who are on the call, uh, I just dropped the link in the chat box. Uh, so please uh, sign in uh, with that link. All right, it's 10 01. Uh, so we'll get started with the briefing. Uh, so, good morning, everyone. Um, uh, welcome to the community day briefing for the, uh, for the measurement of the 3D winds uh, atmosphere wind profile uh, the, the broad agency announcement. Uh, quick intro about me uh, I am uh, Hershus Patel. Uh, I'm with the Office of Archi Satellite Architecture and uh, Planning uh, within NES, uh, within NESTIS NOAA. I am the project lead of the one agency announcement and uh, will be starting off the presentation for this briefing. A few things before we get into the, the presentation, uh, we'd like to uh, uh, we'd like to request everyone that if you're not speaking, please mute yourself uh, uh, so that uh, we can have a smooth uh, briefing. Uh, also, if you are not, uh, if, if you did not intend to be part of this meeting, so I can I request to uh, excuse yourself from the meeting. Uh, since, uh, so I wanted to kind of put the grid out there. Also, um, we will be recording the uh, this session, uh, including the, uh, the transcription. So I uh, uh, wanted to let everyone know about that. So if there's any objection, uh, please. Uh, uh, let us know. Okay, so with that, uh, we would uh, go ahead and get to the uh, the slide two. Okay, so uh, the timeline for these uh, events, uh, we are in the plenary session. That's going to go from 10 to 11, uh, where Noah will be having um, an introduction and uh, the, the opening session. Uh, for the joint venture program. Uh, there will be an overview of the community day and we'll be going over, going over some of the ground rules that's been placed by the contracting officer. Uh, after that, we will be sharing all the BA details with all the participants. At 11 o'clock, we, we will be opening up the floor uh, to everyone to ask any general questions they may have. And uh, uh, we will be we'll do our best to respond to those questions. And if we can't answer those questions in this session, we will uh, note that down and uh, we will follow we will do a follow-up after the meeting. Uh, at 11:40, we will be uh, have we, we do have a time slot uh, for about 15 minutes to uh, to, to kind of ask any general questions for the small business. Um, and that will go until 11:55 before we do the uh, closing remarks for the, for the meeting. And uh, uh, thanks to uh, people uh, who have already signed up for the one-on-one -on -one session this afternoon. Uh, there are eight sessions scheduled this afternoon from uh, their 20 minutes each uh, between one and five. Uh, so, uh, so we are looking forward for those. Okay, um, going to slide three. Um, Again, uh, this plenary session has been uh, is being recorded, including the transcription. Um, uh, again, a reminder to everyone that there is a signing link that's been posted by twice by both backers. So, whoever joined in after uh, panel three or panel four, please uh, uh, please use the link to uh, uh, to, to sign in um, on the link. Uh, also, please, uh, uh, if you have any questions, uh, um, um, please go ahead and drop, uh, drop your questions in the chat box, uh, and I will make sure that I read those questions out and reach out to uh, the joint venture team, and they will respond to those questions. Um, and if there are any questions uh, that we cannot answer, again, you know, we will note them down, and we will uh, do a follow-up um, as soon as we can. 
Uh, also, the one-on-one -on -one session, that will be a recorded session. Uh, I think it's 20 minutes. Uh, uh, it's going to be 20 minutes long. Um, it will happen every half an hour. We will be having a board government evaluation team and NGO representing those sessions. Um, um, and uh, um, in fact, and also we will be uh, any any question, non proprietary questions that will come out of those sessions, uh, we will be sharing with the, with uh, with, uh, with all the participants. Um, and uh, the same concept, uh, if there are any questions that we cannot be answered, uh, we will do a follow up after the meeting. Okay, the slide four. Uh, so uh, I did the quick intro by myself, um, um, and there will be slides that will be presented by uh, the joint venture team members, and they will be doing the intro when they come to their slide. Uh, so as for the agenda, we, have, we will be having a joint venture program overview. Uh, we'll be going over some of the objectives and goals that we have uh, uh, described in the uh, broad agency announcement. Uh, we'll, we'll go over, we'll, pro we'll provide a high level overview of the BA process. And we will also provide the point of contact for uh, any general inquiries you may have uh, uh, after the meeting uh, that you can follow up regarding the BAA. Uh, and um, at the end, we will be having a few in sessions of uh, uh, two parts, a uh, general few in session from 11 to 11.40 and uh, a few in session for small business starting at 11.40. And then we'll uh, close the meeting with, uh, with some remarks. Okay. Moving on to slide five. Uh, so this slide will be presented by Lynn Mayo. Lynn? Then you're on mute. You're still on mute. You're still on mute. <laughs> Um, maybe I don't know if she's having some issues with the try coming in and out of the meeting sometimes that helps. When someone else is oh, out, you got it. Well, okay. got it. Yeah. Got it. Strange, strange. I'm sorry about that. Um, gotta love technology when it works and when it doesn't. So, um, welcome to everyone. My name is Lynn Mayo. I'm the joint venture program manager. I'm really excited to have um, you all here at the community day. This is such an important project. So we're glad that you all are interested in learning more about this. So if you don't know Joint Venture, it's a relatively new program. It's part of the Office of System Architecture and Advanced Planning, USAC. And Joint Venture is all about how do we leverage the capabilities being developed by other partners, um, academia, industry. So how do we leverage the great work that you're, you all are doing so we can provide a high return um, on the funds that may best spend? So our program, we use a wide range of tools, including this um, broad agency announcements, but we actually do other projects also. But really what our goal is, is to provide a confidence in those emerging technologies. There's a lot of interesting work you all are doing, and how do we um, provide confidence that that emergence of te technology can someday be used in new operations, um, which may be involving you know, reducing the risk of some of these technologies, demonstrating the appropriateness of it, because these are emerging technologies, um, we do not currently have specific um, plans for using, say, 3D winds in our operations, but we're really looking at, you know, is this something that we can um, incorporate in the future? And that's really important part of joint venture. We're not doing research for the sake of research. We're doing research for the sake of, is this something that no one can use to, to help meet our mission? And we're looking at it on a um, enterprise type, type level. And so can we affect our future architecture and mission based on this? So again, the work that, that will come out of this project is so important and appreciate you all learning more about it. And the next slide um, is about basic ordering agreements, or excuse me, broad agency announcements. Um, BAAs, broad agency announcements. And many of you um, are probably all familiar with RPs, and I recognize some of you may not be aware um, or familiar, as familiar as you are, with broad agency announcements. And so the reason we're using them is it's really an opportunity for us to look at all the types of opportunities that are out there. Um, we can really, it gives us an opportunity to be a lot more broad, a lot more innovative. You all can be a lot more innovative than if we had an RFP that said, this is exactly what we want. Instead, we really wanna hear from you all. These are the 
the things are out there. This is what's emerged in this area. So we can really um, take advantage of all the knowledge that we have. And so again, if you're not familiar with fraud agency announcements, it just provides more flexibility that will help us you know, best leverage the, the great work that you all are doing. So again, welcome, happy to um, see you all so many people here and looking forward to, to learning more about what you all are recommending for your white papers. All right, thank you, Lane. Um, so uh, the next talk uh, that will be presented by Bill Spencer. Oh, is it Sid Pokemara? Yeah, I'll yeah. um, we'll take that on. So welcome, everyone. Good morning. I'm um, happy to uh, present this few slides to um, perhaps inform you on why 3D wedding measurement is, uh, is important to us. Um, many of you, I think, know that there are 3D winds, and what we mean by 3D winds is really the vertical distribution of the atmospheric winds in both components, uh, U and V, uh, have been determined as a, as a gap from a space architectural perspective in the NOAA planning. Um, and, and it has been uh, defined as this gap also at the international level. Uh, our European partners are deploying the AOLIS um, data and that has uh, shown to be uh, providing some positive impact. So we are exploring how the different technologies that uh, exist for measuring 3D winds could be perhaps planned in the future. Um, so that's why we are ahead of this project. So we are trying to fill that gap of uh, the space building system to allow us to measure 3D winds. We recognize that there are different technologies that allow you to do that. Some of them are more direct uh, and some of them are perhaps more indirect with uh, all of them having pros and cons. So if in, that, in that spirit, what we are trying to do here is to uh, get into field campaigns that will allow us to measure actual data, and uh, that will allow us to understand better the strengths and weaknesses of the different technologies and the error characteristics, and perhaps more importantly, whether they need the, the uh, NOAA performance needs and what could be their potential impact on the uh, NWP and other NOAA systems. So we would like to do that to get real data and get real uh, 3D wind measurements so we can assess the quality and the impact of the NOAA. But at the same time, what we would like to do is uh, uh, give us information that would allow us to plan for the next generation uh, architecture um, if we see that there is something uh, positive and if it's uh, feasible to, to do that from a budget perspective. So if you could go to the uh, next slide. So from a BAA uh, perspective, the technical uh, comp candidate, uh, you will see that uh, there are two objectives there. Um, and uh, both of them try to leverage the technologies and, and you guys' expertise in, in this field. Uh, the first objective is what we are calling technology demonstration. That's the first part that I was talking about, which is to assess the capability of the different technologies that currently exist to measure 3D winds from a suborbital platform, it could be an airborne, it could be a balloon based, or etc. And the, the goal there is to assess these technologies and understand the characteristics of the measurements in terms of errors, in terms of whether they need uh, certain, certain features of, uh, in terms of accuracy, precision, and vertical extent, and, and so on. The second objective is more theoretical, what we call them uh, concept studies. Uh, this is where you could so we understand that the objective A it is going to be bound by what is available in terms of technology. So the, the, the purpose there is take that technology, put it on an airplane or a balloon-based uh, platform, get us the data, and let's assess the quality. The second one is not bound by current technology necessarily. So um, the idea there is to study what could the future sensors look like and how could it be deployed either as a sensor or as a constellation on different platforms and uh, perform the studies that will optimize those concepts to give us the 3D wind measurements from space uh, with a certain set of performances objectives that we have listed in the BA. And if you go to table two, that gives you three columns of the minimum um, uh, uh, performances that we are seeking, the objective, and then the maximum performances. So that gives you the, the trade range of uh, what we are trying to um, to achieve. So in that concept study, that's more theoretical, where we look at the sort of uh, the, um, the best performing constellation or or sensors with the uh, with the best uh, cost associated with them. 
Um, next one. So what do we mean by success, <coughs> excuse me, for this uh, BAA in particular? So the project would be considered as the successful yeah, and you can basically apply to either objective A or objective B or both. Um, but for objective A, for the technology demonstration, the main thing there is we need to be able to do a suborbital flight demonstration um, to measure actual data that we could um, get into the NOAA system and assess the quality of it. So the first part is really the collection of the data. The second part is really demonstrating uh, the data against uh, some reference the regisons or ocean buoys and other other sources of reference data and based on the comparison evaluate the technology performance uh, in terms of data quality accuracy and so on as indicated in uh, the table of number two in that part of objective a we don't expect that all the elements of table two will be covered obviously because it, it would be a suborbital platform concept b that's where it's theoretical and we are assuming that it's a space-based concept and therefore we're expecting that you will be informed by all the elements in, in table two. So in, in that objective B concept studies, we are aiming at assessing the performance of the concepts that you will be proposing, um, either on their own or in combination with other observing systems and data, and uh, have qualitative, quantitative estimates of those uh, different attributes that are listed in, in that uh, section C along with the uh, cost associated with that. Go to the next process. All right, All right so sure. that's the, uh, the extent of what uh, I have to say, and back to you, Arshash. Well, thank you, Sid. Thanks for providing the, uh, the overview of the technical uh, details. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, just uh, uh, as a, a reminder to the folks uh, who joined being uh, with uh, the past uh, 10 minutes, uh, please uh, sign in using the link we have in the chat box. Okay, moving uh, on the, the next chart, uh, uh, the two-step process of the BAA, uh, that will be uh, uh, presented by Gabriel Bravo, the contracting uh, officer. Gabby, Gabby uh, you are on mute. Can you hear me now? Uh, loud and clear. Okay. But I didn't say something snarky. <laughs> Thanks, Harshesh. Um, I'm Gabby Bravo. I'm the contracting officer that supports OSAP from the Office of Acquisition and Grants. Um, so the two, this BAA is set up in a two-step process. Uh, the first step is the white paper submission um, from industry on the concepts that are responsible to the technical content um, that has been laid out in, in the BAA itself. Um, these white papers are supposed to be um, five pages max, and once we've received them, they'll be reviewed by a technical evaluation board. We're going to evaluate them um, for best scientific concept, um, and they will use uh, technical merit, past performance, and price to determine which, which of the white papers and studies proposed therein are the best fit for the future mission goals of the OSAP. Um, so then once they've done that, a subset of the white papers will be selected and those um, entities will receive an invitation for proposal. At that point in time, if you haven't been selected, you will also be notified, um, though the, the BAA itself does state that if for some reason we were to receive additional funding, we could go back later within a year um, to one of the unselected white papers and you know, um, that we would be interested in pursuing that study at that time. So there, there is a possibility that the white paper can be resurrected. Um, and then the selection of which studies would ultimately be funded for, for um, a contract would be based on the strength of concept um, and your proposed pricing and our available funding. Um, next slide, please. All right, thank you, Gabby. Um, so yeah, that uh, uh, thank you for presenting that. Uh, hey, this chart will go to you. Yep, yep. so I'm off mute and everybody can hear me, right? I got this one. Okay, third time's a charm for us. Here we go. So I'm uh, I'm Dave Spencer. I am Dr. Bhupta Barra's technical and programmatic sidekick in this effort. Um, we both support Arshesh, who is going to be the 
project manager for this study. Um, early on, we got some well, we got some early questions from uh, from you guys uh, about some confusion of to what to what to put in the white paper. What were we looking for in the white paper when it comes to costs and pricing? So we added this chart in hopes to clarify that today. And then we'll be updating the BAA to you know, based upon your feedback and, and how we are able to make this clear. We'll update the broad agency announcement to reflect that. Um, the idea behind the white paper in a, is to see what you all have to offer and then pick one or a few of these to actually conduct the study. And to be able to to do that, we want to ensure that what we're paying for for this study gets us to where we want to be, not just uh, at, you know, as either the objective A or the objective B or both, but primarily with, uh, with respect to objective B, since we're looking out into the future. We not just, we, we not only want to know what the study will cost, the two year study, right? how much are we going to be paying you to do this study? But also, as part of the white paper, we'd like your assessment, if you have it, to be able to tell us what you think that objective B would cost for a future implementation. The idea being is we expect you guys to come in and say, hey, we've got this 3D win system that can meet all of your performance criteria in table two, and it can be done for two cents, 20 cents, or $10 million. Right? That's important value for us, which allows us to say, to focus and say, wow, we'd like to spend more, we'd like to have this study done rather than that study. So it helps us out in, in, in winnowing down the field. Uh, hopefully that clarifies what it is we're, why we're asking for kind of two different kinds of prices in the white paper. Um, and we can always at the question and answer session, I can elaborate more. You can give us the appropriate English to put in here where it resonates with you. Happy to help. Thanks, Chuck. All right, thank you so much, Dave. Uh, all right, so the remaining charts uh, uh, will be reviewed by Patty. Thank you. Can you guys hear me now? Yes, we can. Um, all right, so in terms of partnering and collaboration, we've also received a lot of questions pertaining to this. Um, so we encourage any type of collaboration that you would like to put in place. Um, you can form a team with other en interested entities um, and submit a response to this BAA, um, certainly. Uh, the only thing that we ask in the, in the case of teaming arrangements is that the team lead or the prime organization is the one who's going to be responsible with interacting with us um, on the government side. So if you have a team that's comprised of, you know, a company, an academic institution, um, and maybe a, I don't know, some, a research laboratory, uh, the, if the prime was the company, um, they would be the one that the government would put the contract in place with. The white paper should be submitted by, by that prime company. Um, and it should detail the teaming arrangement, the members of the teams, um, and what the role of each team member is going to be. But ultimately, all of the, our interaction will take place with that prime organization, and the study itself will be awarded to that prime organization. Um, NOAA is not going to kind of act as a, a go-between between the different team members on um, managing that relationship for, for a team. Um, next slide, please. Uh, so timeline, uh, the white papers are scheduled to be due on May 27th, um, and we're really looking forward to seeing those. Um, once they, they're submitted, they'll go to the evaluation team, as we already discussed, and at that point, um, if you're invited to receive an invitation for proposal, that should happen on June 10th, um, giving you a few weeks to submit a proposal submission on July 1st. Um, Evaluation of that proposal will take place, um, and then we will shoot for contract award on or about September 2nd, um, with the latest uh, time for that being uh, September 26th is the last day we could possibly award a fiscal, fiscal 22 contract. 
Um, next slide, please. Uh, so I, I've already introduced myself. Um, I'm the contracting officer. I'm supported in um, this project by Brayton Curtis. He's the contract specialist. And we're the ones that you're going to be engaging with questions or clarifications. Um, anything you need, uh, you can send us that information um, and we'll make sure that it gets to the appropriate project technical or somebody else, um, and so we're going to be your liaisons for this process. Um, next slide. And here's our contact information, uh, where you can find us at all times. Um, and next slide. Um, Debbie, that was the last job we had in the package. Just right. Thank you so much for it. <laughs> no next slide. Um, uh -huh. But at this yeah, point in time, we're going to move forward um, into the question and answer session. Uh, a little bit early, we're running a little, I'm so excited to talk about this, which is going to so quickly. Um, so we're going to open the floor up to any questions that you have um, for us. If you could put them in the chat box, um, we'll, we'll go through and read them kind of in order. If you have questions that are specific to a small business status and you want to hold those for the small business, um, Q&A session that will be announced later. We encourage you to do that, and then we'll just kind of like handle those questions at that time. Thanks. All right, thank you so much, Debbie. Uh, yeah, we already have a couple of the questions in the chat box. So yeah, this uh, yeah we are running the session uh, a little bit, uh, I would say half an hour, a little bit if we can. Uh, that's good, giving us uh, plenty of time to go over uh, the questions uh, that we we get uh, uh, from the from the from the participants. So. The first question that we have in the chat box from Derek, uh, uh, objective B, are you looking for studies of specific, um, in parenthesis of individual 3D lens concept, or comparative studies of several different 3D lens measurement techniques? Um, I believe I guess we'll go to C. Yeah, so, so Derek, the objective B, the, the intent, the, the, short, the, the short answer is that both are in scope of this DAK. Um, ultimately, what we are trying to do, obviously, is assess what is the most optimal concept that we should potentially plan for. So either we get it from different studies, or an individual study would offer different concepts or different costs. That would be very helpful to us. So it is in scope. Uh, it's up to you what you can uh, afford doing within your study, either one concept or comparative studies of different concepts. All right, thank you, Sid. Thanks for the response. Uh, uh, I'll keep an eye on the chat box if there's a follow-up question uh, from Derek. So uh, the second question we have is uh, for objective A, is, uh, is it assumed that the three, the green instrument provider also uh, provide the aircraft used to collect the measurements that is a NASA or private sector uh, or university aircraft? Or are we expected to integrate on a new aircraft like the P2? So the, the answer to that is that there is no expectation that you would be integrating on the NOAA aircraft. Um, you're welcome to coordinate with the other parts of NOAA to do that if uh, that's what you think is, is best. Um, but the expectation is that the offer would be coordinating both the sensor and, and the platform um, to collect the data. All right, thank you, Sid. Uh, all right, so the next one, uh, we need some clarification. Uh, so you mentioned desire to leverage previous government investment, but the words in the BAA about other government agency involvement are a bit of confusing. If NASA researchers develop a unique instrument, then would they be permitted to submit? Gabby, you want to take that on, or should I take it back with you? I think there's, there's, there might be portions for both of us on this one. Um, so in terms of government involvement, um, there are limitations to whether a government entity can submit. And those are kind of the, the parameters around those are detailed on page four of the BAA. Um, so basically, we don't want solutions coming from government where they're taking, um, where they're taking space away from private industry. Um, if they're going to propose a concept that's available elsewhere, they wouldn't be able, we wouldn't be able to move forward with um, kind of like a partnership with them. 
Um, but like I said, page four of the BAA provides a little bit more information about that, and hopefully um, that additional detail can answer your question. If there were a concept that's uniquely NASA that no one else is doing, and it's not taking competition away from private industry or other academic institutions, then we might consider doing an interagency agreement. Um, but at this time, we can't really say because we don't want to evaluate it and do that. Um, I think All right. Uh, thank you, Gabby. Uh, Say, do you uh, do you have any? I'm I, 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 and I see that Dave has concern raised. Yeah, I think I, I wanted to elaborate a little bit, Harshish. Uh, the I think some of the confusion also stems from you know, the definition of what joint venture was, where we're saying that joint venture was leveraging previous government investments. And then now we're talking about perhaps funding the government to do this. So Gary, thanks a lot for explaining that aspect. But the, the previous aspect is, is there are technologies out there right now um, that have benefit from previous government investments, not so much NOAA. And so NOAA is using our funding through joint venture to be able to advance technologies that were either done commercially through IRAD, through government investments, to focus it towards NOAA's needs uh, and their mission. And so that's how that fits into the leveraging aspect. So hopefully that clarified that too. So I appreciate Dave for clarifying uh, on top of getting. Uh, so the next question, uh, is it possible to submit a paper for Objective B that offers a more advanced solution to the proven instrument than Objective A? Uh, I would give that either to Sid or Dave. I would say absolutely. The, the Objective B is, is the uh, theoretical study that would give us information about the optimal concepts for 3D wind. They shouldn't be bound by necessarily by existing uh, technology if they see fit. So absolutely, feel free to offer in Objective B the most optimal concept for 3D events with the associated cost um, with it. All right, thank you, Sid. Uh, I believe the next one is going to come to you. Uh, so maybe you want to have your microphone muted. <laughs> Uh, what is meant by currently existing technology? Does this mean specific hardware or general measurement concept that is currently in operation? I guess that's for Dave, I would assume. Sure, I can take it. Um, so when you say currently existing technology, I think we're talking about objective A here. And uh, the idea here is we, we realized in setting up this BAA that there are many uh, different approaches to measuring 3D winds. Some of them are almost ready for prime time. And that's what we mean by currently existing technology. So what we're trying to do is see how well those existing technologies do in meeting our NOAA mission needs. Um, your second sentence, though, has the word currently in operation. And so obviously that's I think I've cleared that up. When we say operational, that means it's on orbit and we're using the data. That's not the case for any of these at this stage, um, except for the products that we generate today, which is just more A and B type of stuff. So hopefully that clarified what we're talking about. Um, so George, let me know by, by chat if that helped. Uh, thank you, Dave, for taking that. Uh, next one for Jack TV. Can you confirm whether you are looking for forecast OSSES uh, or for uncertainty called quantification and or sampling studies? So, for this one, I think we, we need to clarify the, the objective B is really to get concepts, um, information about concepts that you guys would propose to measure the 3D winds. That's the main objective. And along with the concept, so that would involve, uh, if it's a passive concept, then it would be perhaps, uh, I want to deploy three IR sensors, for instance, or I want to do wind LIDAR. So it's the concept itself, the, the aspect of uh, what is it that we deploy, what type of sensor, what are the characteristics, 
what, what, what is the performance of orbital terms and so on. That's the, the main objective. As part of the, describing the, the objective, what we want to know is what are the performance of that concept. So you might want to do an OSSC or to get the to get the, the performances to answer the question on table two. Um, but uh, I, I want to just highlight that the main objective is really to get the concept information along with the performances that comes with it and the cost that comes with it. So you can do a uh, sort of uh, a trade phase to, to uh, reach the, the, the best optimal uh, plan for the future. I hope that answered the question. Right, thank you, Sid. Uh, right, so the next one is uh, a follow-up to the previous question. Uh, building on the prior question regarding the paper for Objective B, that is built on the proven technology from Objective A, should we speak to submitting only in one category, or should we do both objectives? You can submit in both categories. Um, they would just have to be separate, separate white papers. All right, thank you, Gabby. That was, uh, and we do have some clarification on the video, so that's, that's good. Um, okay, that was the last question in the chat box. Um, any, does anyone have any more questions? Uh, this is an opportunity to uh, go and ask any general questions. We are open here. Oh, okay, one more pop up. Um, for n item cost estimate of objective B, does that include launch vehicle, the bus, or just the sensor? Dave, you want to take that on? Sure. Um, from our perspective, we want to understand, um, I would say, I would say all of the above. Because the intent is, how do we get this into, but how would it take to implement it? In an extreme example, if an Aeolus type of LIDAR is the only way to do this, we definitely need to know the rocket costs and how many of these things we want to need to build and what sort of, you know, obviously, spacecraft it would take to support such a large laser. Um, at the same time, if we're talking about proliferated passive sensors, too, there's a certain aspect of we need to take into account how they would get into orbit. Are they multiple launches? Are they multiple satellites on a single launch? Uh, that sort of information is helpful. Uh, so yes, it's I would I would say total concept. All right, thank you, David, for taking that. Uh, we have three new questions in there. The chat. Uh, the first one: Can you clarify if you uh, if you meant the budget for both objectives is a total of four million dollars, or is there a four million for per objective? I can get that. Um, so the total budget for both objectives is four million dollars for studies over up to two years. Um, that said, if more funding were to become available, that might change. Um, and so right now, but right now the the idea is that for both studies awarded for both objective A and objective B with total four million dollars. Well, thank you, Gabby, for clarification on the cost. Uh, uh, next, uh, how many concepts does NOAA expect to select for funding objectives A and B? I think that's it. Um, so, the number of concepts selected, uh, anticipate of selecting at least one, um, but likely more, um, and that would really depend on which concepts were found to be the most beneficial and what the pricing looked like for those. So it could be five, depending on the prices that are proposed, it could be two, it could be one, it could be none, we decided that none of them met um, for requirements. Uh, and the last question, uh, so assuming if you are submitting the white papers for both objectives, you are in the running for two separate invitations to proposal and two separate possible contract awards. That's correct. Right. 
but uh, thank you, Gary, for putting some uh, lights on that. Okay, uh, so I suppose the last question on the chat box. Uh, we're still taking more questions. Uh, any general questions that you may have? I'm sure that everyone must be thinking um, uh, based on the views that we shared and the questions that we uh, populated in the chat box. Oh, I see two more coming in. Um, is today the only day available for one of your sessions? Um, so actually, Prashash, uh, do we have any more open slots available today? This is a question for you right away. Um, yeah, prior to the meeting, um, I would say half an hour uh, before the meeting, uh, I saw there was, uh, there was one more spot available for today. Um, but Dave? Yeah, yeah there's, one, there's still one slot available. Okay, so there is still one slot available today. It's possible that we might choose to open other one-on-one -on -one sessions, but given that all of the ones today have not been taken up, probably not at this time. If you have additional questions, though, um, that you would like to submit that are you know, proprietary, you don't have to submit them um, in the chat box. You can send us an email and we'll respond to you directly. Right, so I just confirmed that this one-on-one uh, -on -one session that was available uh, so we'll have a uh, two thirty uh, this afternoon. So, okay. Uh, moving on to the next one. Uh, let's say you have an instrument, a mission concept that builds upon an airborne instrument that is currently flying. Is no interested in instrument that was simply space called by that concept. Dave, I suggest you take that on. Sure. I mean, if, if that's the concept that, that, that you feel will meet the performance needs we're looking for um, in table two, then certainly uh, that's definitely uh, something we'd be interested in seeing. All right, thank you, Dave. Uh, okay, uh, the next one was no, I expect to commit staff. To assimilate or analyze the data collected from the several different platforms. Thanks for this question. Uh, it allows us to clarify that. So, part of the planning for supporting the BAA is indeed uh, two types of government support. Um, there is a government team that will help with the guidance, I would say, um, suggesting if you have a suggested question about uh, the direction to go or what type of uh, decision to make and so on. There would be a government team that would allow you to answer those questions and give you guidance on a regular basis, perhaps on a monthly basis. But there is also, perhaps more importantly, uh, a, a more tactical team that is uh, being uh, set up now internally in NOAA to help with, with this PAA. So they are the ones who would be providing you with uh, perhaps uh, template formats and template files and so on to, to collect the data in a certain format and, facilitate the transition to the NOAA system for assessment and, and the NWP data assimilation experiment. Um, the BAA also calls for the vendor to do some preliminary assessment of the quality of the data, um, but uh, you will be working also with the tactical team in NOAA to, to do more, more of that assessment and uh, experiments to assess the quality and impact on the NOAA systems. Right, thank you so much, uh, so, uh, right, so the next uh, question in the line, uh, there's no expected commit, uh, I think we just did that, uh, let's go down, uh, yeah, so another question related to the, uh, the funding, uh, can you clarify, is it 4 million max per funded study, or 4 million split among accepted proposals? It's 4 million for all all awards that go out, so it's split across however many awards. Okay. Right. Um, the last question, uh, will NOAA want raw instrument data, process data, or both? I would say both. 
So we want to basically have the three D random information as part of this um, of this project. Okay. Um, yeah, I don't see any more questions in the chat box. Um, right, we still have some. We still have time uh, for the two to Q and A session. So uh, please uh, go ahead and make those questions available in the chat box. So far, we haven't had a question uh, that we put down as a as an action to follow up. Uh, I hope we're able to add more clarity to those questions. Not, so not seeing anything in the chat box. Um, all right, a couple more calls. Uh, any questions you have? Okay, last call for any general question. And I'll give it a few more seconds to see if someone has got any questions. Okay, so not, not seeing any more questions in the chat box. Uh, uh, Kevin, do you want to uh, open up the floor um, for small business? Yeah, yeah. Okay, so uh, uh, if anyone have any questions related to small business, uh, please go ahead and drop them in the box. So nothing coming in. Right, another call. Any questions related to the small business? call oh all right so there's one in the check box uh all right is that expected percentage of RFPs directed to your small business thanks for your question um so there is no set aside uh that we've done for this just because of the way VAs are structured to get the state-of-the-art scientific solutions and we didn't want to cycle any of that by making a, a small business set aside requirement. That said, very much encourage small businesses to submit white papers or to work with larger businesses um, and other entities in tuning agreements. Um, we definitely want to help businesses get their ideas off the ground. Um, and we're not just looking at one type of entity to work with the AAC. Okay, thank you. 
All right, I know I did the last call. Uh, I'm going to be uh, on the last call for any questions for small business. Maybe just to give people a little time to formulate if they had any other thoughts. Um, just some information if you are interested in team main agreements, we're going to be releasing a list of the attendees for today, um, along with the slide deck to everybody. Uh, so we'll be sending that out in the next couple of days so you can see everyone who attended. If you're a small business and you're looking to partner with, with other um, entities on a white paper proposal, that will give you a list of people I contact. Um, if not, we'll look forward to seeing you in the future. Thank you, Debbie, for sharing that. Uh, we, will, we also want to elaborate on the, uh, if someone has any question, follow-up questions after the session, they're welcome to uh, send it to, uh, to you and uh, Brighton. Uh, and you want to give them a deadline? Um, yes, I believe in the, the white paper we have said that um, people could submit um, questions for an additional period of time up to the 18th. Let me just double check. Make sure that that is the correct date that we put in there. Yes. Um, so if you have any. Any additional inquiries that you would like to submit, you can submit them on until May 18th um, to both myself and contact specialist Brighton Curtis. Um, and we will provide a list of all the Q&A as an amendment to the BAA. Um, once we will try to turn that around within a couple of days, bearing in mind that you'll have about a week um, to, to submit your, your white paper response. So we want everyone to have the answers to all their questions consolidated. Okay, um, I see two more questions. Uh, can you explain how small business can respond to Objective B without teaming with an Objective A responder? Senator Dave, do you think you might be able to handle that? I'm not sure how to answer that question. Yeah, um, I guess. Uh, I'm a little confused as to why a small business wouldn't be able to handle objective B all by itself since it's a study um, and an analysis and the concept of operations. Um, so I, I don't believe objective B requires a large company to respond to that. Maybe, maybe a way to, to explain this is objective B is independent of objective A. Objective B is looking at the concept. You know, developing a concept does not have to be, the concept you develop doesn't have to be based on um, you know, the outcome of objective A. It's basically looking at all the options out there, objective B. Okay. Great, thank you, Stephen. Um, all right, the final question on the list are uh, not necessarily small business focused, but related. Uh, NASA is starting to consider teaming diversity in proposal. Does NOAA have any plans to take into account diversity in these papers or proposals? So, Related to the why we decided not to do any set asides, we we didn't want to limit, we didn't want to limit anyone by making some sort of requirement to have additional teaming or giving preferential treatment to teaming arrangements. Um, we were looking really for the best state of the art ideas for the areas that we're studying, so we wanted to leave it as broad as possible. We encourage teaming; we love to see it. Um, but we're not necessarily going to give preferential treatment to teaming agreements, proposals submitted by teams versus um, by individual entities at this time, um, at least not in the, the BAA format. Yeah. 
Uh, thank you. Okay, uh, so we are still running uh, the session uh, ahead of the time that we allocated uh, for this event. So uh, we still have time for more questions. So um, if you want to recall any questions you have. All right, uh, so this will be a final call again uh, before we get to the closing remarks. Okay, so not seeing anything um, in the in the chat, uh, we move on to other uh, the, the remark, uh, the remarks uh, for this session. Um, so we had a good number of participants uh, for the for this uh, event. So we'd like to thank you uh, for taking time uh, on the side and uh, attending. We really appreciate that. Uh, and just to kind of echo what uh, Gary said, we will be sharing the slide package and. Uh, we will be sending out the attendance uh, report to everyone so that everyone would know who participated in the briefing. All right, I'll uh, pass the floor over to my joint venture team. If they have any closing remark, uh, I would start off with uh, uh, Lee. Okay, thanks. And again, um, I'm Lee Shaw, so we're just want to thank you all for your, your time this morning. I'm really excited to hear and read about the proposals you all submitted. I think it's really a great project and look forward to work with some of us. All right, thank you, Lynn. Um, yeah, before we move, before we go to the, uh, the next team member, I just wanted to uh, remind again that uh, there is a sign in form uh, that's available uh, via link in the chat box. So if you haven't signed in for this event, please do before you leave the meeting. All right, uh, so next, uh, uh, Sid. All right, just to say thank you for your participation today and for the questions that you asked. I think they were very useful to clarify things and I look forward to the white papers. All right, thank you so much, uh, Dave. And just to echo that we're excited about moving forward with implementing 3D lens measurements. And this is the first step, and, uh, and we're, uh, we're glad to be leading it. Well, I appreciate it, Dave. Uh, uh, Gabby? Nothing further to add. Just thank you for your time for attending the presentation and looking forward to collaborating. All right, uh, thank you so much uh, to the team. Uh, Everybody uh, uh, provided their uh, closing statement for this session. So, yeah, we'll be excited to see you all. Uh, oh, uh, before we go, uh, oh, there's an appreciation in the chat box. Thank you. Um, so, yeah, before, uh, just uh, again, a, a reminder to everyone there are one on one sessions scheduled this afternoon. Uh, as it was mentioned before, we do have one more time slot available at 2.30, so uh, I've been checking lately if that's been taken out, but if it's still available, uh, if anyone's interested, uh, please sign up. And we'll be excited to uh, go over any uh, question, additional questions that you may have for us. Okay, so thank you so much, and I believe this completes our session. Appreciations.